We might be drunk, we might be drunk, as long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk. Raise a glass, let's talk shit, head peeps, Rex, and a bit, maybe drunk. We might be drunk, yeah. Hey, hey, folks, here we are, we might be drunk. I'm still hurting from that uh, Corpse Reviver. Holy shit, that thing kicked me in the ass. We, he said to have, what, one, right? Yeah. We, we went back down. We had, the, we had the, what, three or four? Yeah, yeah, we did a Patreon, we just kept going, and oh. uh, I was laying on my couch at about 7 p.m. going, I can't go out, I had gigs, I had to go out and get Chipotle to, like, stuff that fucking liquor down. I was not doing well. No, I was cranky. I, I called the booker. I yelled at him. I did uh, I did a spot at the cellar in that first couple minutes. You know when those first couple minutes you're like, oh, I'm drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do know those minutes. I'm not like, I'm not like, I'm not like hammered. I'm aware of what I'm yeah. saying, but I'm like, I'm a step slow here. Yes, I had a beard even out. I was that guy. It feels like you're swimming with like weights on. Yes. Yes. Like, I can still swim, but I'm not going to win a race. No, no, no. Even though you look like Michael Phelps, you're fucked. But... From the face up, which is not a good feeling. <laughs> you never want that compliment. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he, you're way hairier, too. You'd be <laughs> way, way oh my slower. God. Just that, <laughs> that Jewish locks floating behind. <laughs> Chest hair looks rough in the pool. I remember being like being around my dad in the pool, and it was like coming out to here, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, no one wants to swim next to George the Animal Steel. That's not a great uh, <laughs> lap partner. By the way, all those people out there, you get drunk before a show, you have one to loosen up, it's all a myth. The booze slows you down like crazy. It's like saying, oh, you go into the MMA fight, you get a couple pops in you. <laughs> no, you got to be fresh. You got to be sharp. Yeah, you know, we're better sober, obviously. Yeah. I mean, there's I, there's some comics who do it. Like, Stan Hope, I feel like, has always done it. Yeah, he's almost gone over the hump where he's, like, normal drunk. Well, when you're a full-fledged alcoholic, yeah. you're probably, you don't know how to perform sober. Exactly. Whatever you're used to. So I guess you can pull it off if you become a full-on drunk. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, but you gotta, it takes a couple of years of hitting your wife and abandoning your kids and DUIs and all that. <laughs> so you gotta really commit to it. <laughs> You, did you see those guys in the heyday, the Dave Attells, the Geraldos, like drinking back there? Like Nick Griffin drank, all these guys. Well, I never, I wasn't around, were you? No, but I remember you used to go to shows at least. Yeah, I remember went to see Attell live in like 2004. And, oh. and he was he did like a Jaeger shot on stage. Wow. That's wild. Jaeger. Jaeger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw... I, well, we've all seen Bert. I mean, Bert drinks, you know, to it's pick cra- up his it's kids. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Who else? He uh, drinks to, to get the nerve to drive. That's how he drinks. <laughs> yeah, he blows in a, a breathalyzer, and it's like not drunk enough. <laughs> this car won't start. <laughs> oh my god, have you ever been picked up by someone who has one of those? No. I did a gig once. It was forget what club it was. It was in the Midwest, and uh, the guy they sent me to pick who picked me up at the airport. He had to blow into it to start the car because wow. I guess he got a DUI, which is like it makes you feel like a real, real high up on the comedy list. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is my ride. This the is guy, who you chose. The guy you flipped his Toyota two months ago. <laughs> Thanks for sending me Tiger Woods. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'd rather Caitlyn Jenner pick me up at the airport for fuck's sake. <laughs> at least she'll hit the the guy on the road, not you. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, was that, that Bruce. Was I, it Caitlyn? It was Caitlyn. It was Caitlyn. Yeah, yeah, it was once she became a woman. That was that was the punchline. There you go. That was the whole thing. But we, uh, so he's uh, picking up with driving, and he'd have to pull over to blow into it just to make sure he didn't like start once he did that. Whoa! That's how little they trusted him. They're like, "We're gonna give you a, a pop quiz every once in a while. You got to pull over." So how does it work? Does the car? It's just click, 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 and then he goes, and then it starts up. I guess. I, wow. Yeah. And then I remember. <laughs> He got pissed at me because I was like, oh, this is hilarious. I'll do like an Instagram story uh, to like uh-huh. to promote the gigs. I'm like, oh, they sent the best ride here. He was like, please, please don't. I'm like, all right, so I won't. <laughs> I've been through enough. My wife left me. <laughs> and then I realized, I'm like, oh, he's a person. I'm an yeah, asshole. Yeah, yeah. Well, a- Christopher Reeves, God rest his soul, he had that machine, that uh, wheelchair, and he would operate it with his breath because he couldn't he was paralyzed so he would be like and it would move damn so imagine if you played a prank on him you put the breathalyzer thing up to that you're like oh sorry chris you had a champagne coolie earlier you're not going anywhere 
All right, what are we drinking tonight? <laughs> All right. What are we doing? Today we just have uh, basically oh like a classic Paloma. The bar Jew with a Paloma. We got tequila, grapefruit juice, soda water, a little, li- a little lime, and uh, I put a little rosemary in there just wow. for a little bit of uh, aromatics. This is gorgeous. But other than that, very simple, a little salt rim as well. You've kicked it up a notch. Yeah. Look at this. Look at that. But it's also very easy to make at home, you know? Come on. So just I, like, heard the, I heard the Mexicans, when they eat ass, they put a little salt on the rim. <laughs> That's cocaine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Did this... they hit a lime? <laughs> this looks good. Man. That looks delight. I mean, you go, you're going to get laid tonight, baby. What this is, is what, great. what is the, is there like a history? It's a Mexican drink, right? The Paloma? Yeah. So a lot of people think that um, uh, in the 1860s, there was like some huge hit song called Paloma. Mm. And they think it was named after that. Um, my, my, my Paloma. Yeah. And, uh, but it just started out in like a huge hotel in uh, Mexico, in Cancun, I think. But I'm not sure. You can't quote me on that. All right. Good. That is it's one of the most popular uh, tequila drinks like in mm. the world, actually, besides the margarita. Margarita's number one. This is, this is Garfunkel. Yeah. I'll forget it right after it's over. <laughs> mm. This mm. is, it's good. It's, it tastes almost like, just like kind of not too sweet, which I like. I know. It's like a great fruity, refreshing summer drink. Yeah, like the traditional one uses actually uses like grapefruit soda. Mm. Um, but I just made it with soda, like grape, red grapefruit juice and soda water just so people can, at home can make it. Because so, grapefruit soda is kind of a bitch to find. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Haritos or something? Do they do it? I don't know if Haritos does it, but you could probably find a flavor like that. Oh, some people in the South use squirt. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. My ex. <laughs> <laughs> David Tell joke. What was, My what? ex was a squirter. Tried to have a romantic dinner with candlelight. She blew him out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is Damn. so good. It, it almost sounds like uh, you know, if you're a drunk cop, you're like, woo, Paloma. All right, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Tip your waiter. This is good, man. Grapefruit is underrated. Underrated, especially in a drink. It gets a bad rap. I feel like b- grapefruit is like hip to shit on. They're like grapefruit. That, that, like, I've seen comics get a punchline with that. Like grapefruit sucks, and yeah. you're just like, it's fucking good. I hate to say, it, but one of our favorite comedians. But that's a good bit. That's a great bit. He he tackles grapefruit with a chunk of. This is why. This is why Gary Goldman's great because. He does it for like seven minutes. Yes. It's not like, but I've seen comics do it like a cop out where they're like, oh, like the grapefruit. And you're like, you got to have more than more just than that. that. Yeah. But, but Goldman has a great take of like, when you have a tumor, it's the size of a grapefruit. That's what you compare it to as a tumor. It's so perfect. And it, he said it ruins a whole, he's got, this is one of the great lines in comedy. Uh, it ruins the whole fruit salad when there's a grapefruit. He's like, it takes down everyone like a 10th grade pothead. Oh, like, wow. Oh, man. Damn. He's, a, he's a great writer, that gull. He's a great comic. Mm. This is a, this is a problem because this, this is sneaky. I could drink twelve of these. Yeah, this is good, man. Man, the Mexicans do it right. They really Mexican food is probably like the easiest food. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like everyone, unless you have some dairy thing, but uh, but other than that, everyone is on board with Mexican. It's got to be the yeah. most popular cuisine in America, don't you think? Probably like ethnic cuisine, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. San Diego, that's all they talk about. San Antonio, that's all they talk about. Yep. L.A., holy, yep. holy shit! They're like, we have Mexican food. Like, we have it everywhere, <laughs> but ours is better. Look, it's it yeah. is better. It the is. L.A. I, 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 it pains me to give anything to L.A., but we got to play it fair. They've got better Mexican food. You have a burrito in San Diego. It, as the kids say. It hits different. You know, it's got like some weird green sauce in there and they put the lime and the radish. It's fucking great. The radish is underrated. Mm. You ever throw a little butter on a radish? What? Dude, that's Never that's, heard a, of it. that's a fucking good move. Butter on a radish? I'm telling you, the French, man. Wait a minute. You just take a full radish. You, you slice a... it. You put a little butter on it. I've never heard of such so, a so, thing. Matt, can you look that up to tell me I'm not crazy? I, I think I saw Bourdain do that. I've been doing what? that ever since. That's a that's a hot move, man. The the radish with butter. You know Bourdain ate ass. I mean, imagine <laughs> if he didn't eat a woman's ass. You'd be like, are you kidding me? I watched you eat like a, a snake's heart. <laughs> you won't. Yeah, but you go, the snake's heart tasted good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Radish and sweet butter. I'm telling you, it's pretty good. Oh, kosher. I didn't know this was some kind of a uh, Hebrew thing you I'm were not sliding trying to, in. I'm not trying to sneak this one in. This All is right. for every. I, I think there's a French thing. Hmm. Radishes with butter and salt. There you go. It's pretty good. It sounds like a light, nice light lunch. It's nice. Yeah. Nice little snack. 
Mexicans, also great beer, by the way. I love a Modelo. I love a Dos Equis. Negro uh, Modelo, or do you go Especial? I go Especial. I go Negro. Oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> I said Negro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go Especial. I like it a little lighter, and then the sole is great. I mean, even a Tecate is solid. Tecate is a good cheap beer. Yeah. That's like the Mexican PBR. Exactly. And, and it's, it's way better. It's way better. PBR sucks. It sucks. I see people. I saw someone with that, my, one of my shows drinking a PBR, and I said, what do you really want? It's on me. Uh, <laughs> that's a great move. The on <laughs> me is big. You can afford it. <laughs> that's nice. The PBR it, is like, a, I mean, even Milwaukee's best beats the shit out of PBR. I agree. I agree. And I would drink. 22 ounces of those fuckers, one after one in Brooklyn, just because it was so cheap. I would drink, I used to drink so many 40s, Old English, mm. Cold 45. They were just cheap, and they, and you were like, it, it was kind of fun to have a 40 because I, this is going to sound really pathetic, but like it felt satisfying to finish one. It did, yeah. That last sip, you're like, I did it. <laughs> it's the worst kind of accomplishment. <laughs> it's true, but, uh, it was so thick that malt liquor, and it got you real fucked up. Did you yeah. ever do Edward 40 hands? Oh, you have to strap them both yeah. to your hands? I never did that, but, I mean, we got fucked up. I've yeah. seen people do that. We did it. I, I, The only thing I'm good at is I have a big bladder because of bedwetting, and my dad made me <laughs> not piss all day because he's a cunt. But uh, I, I could I could drink two of them and not pee, and my friend's like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. It, was, it was the best moment of my life. That is pretty impressive. Yeah. I pee nonstop. I'm like a fucking 80. I don't know how it's going to get worse. Oh, my God. You got a bladder of a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible man i wake up literally every two hours i feel like what yeah i wake up a lot oh no i'm also just i'm just an irritable human being i'll be like my neck will hurt i'll piss i'll just wake up early i'll just like my girlfriend will just wake up and she'll be like you're just awake i'm like yeah yeah i have that too but just because of mental shit but the, yeah. the two hour urine i mean you're ruining your whole sleep cycle it's killing me Damn, I feel bad. Yeah, I hate to say it, but you could stretch it. Yeah? Yeah, I mean- Just I hold it in. Just hold it in. It's uncomfortable, but like, start holding it, and then you go, all right, I made it for 20 minutes. I'll go pee now. Next day, I made it for 30, and then before you know it, you, you're going to be good. Damn, it's crazy that you can work shit like that out. It's crazy you can stretch, like, everything. Yeah, I mean, you can- It's literal stretching. Like, if we did this every day, we could do a split. But it's just a pain I don't know in about the that. Ass. You think yeah. we could do a split? Well, I mean, you see guys doing it. Yeah, but I don't think they're us. Probably not. They're like those are like gymnast type dudes. Yeah, but everybody starts somewhere. I don't know. You, how flexible are you? Flexible? No, I'm stiff as a board. Like my girlfriend will sometimes fuck with me and like try to put my legs over my head, to, and uh, like as a joke. And I'm like, I, it hurts. She's like, that's crazy. If I was as unflexible as you, we couldn't bang. Do you ever? Uh... <laughs> you know. <laughs> She likes the leg up, throw it around. She's like uh, Gumby and uh, or Stretch Armstrong for the, the younger kids. Who's the new Bendy guy? I don't even know anymore. Is there a new Bendy Gumby's guy? Stretch Armstrong was the old. shit, dude. That, oh, was, yeah. that toy was awesome for about uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the toys we played with. We're like, look, his arms stretch. Yeah. Like, how fucking, how fucking primitive was shit before video games? That's a good point. I mean, there were video games, but like, not really. Not great, yeah. Stretch Armstrong was huge, and my friend cut him open and ate the shit inside. I think he had to go to the hospital. Fun and that's Stretch Armstrong. He's been pulled out like that. He looks like he's in like a fucking uh, dominatrix uh, uh, video. <laughs> yeah, it's a torture thing. <laughs> torture that, porn. That was a torture device, the stretch thing. That's true. That's crazy that some guy made those, like the the coffin with the spikes in it or the stretchy apart thing. Some guy had to design those. Look at that. That was a part of history. Yeah, someone's making that. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty bad dude right there. Now we do this on Twitter. <laughs> You know, it's all, we're all the same. Like we act like these are horrible people, but we all, we have all those genes and you know, the same wiring. Twitter is just, is I'm looking less and less. It's just madness. Good for you. It's, it's evil. Are you on there a lot? I try to write a joke a day and have a little exercise. And then people are like, why aren't you, why are you silent about this? And I'm like, well, we, silent. Could, we could do that all day. Like, why aren't you talking about elderly abuse? You know, <laughs> like, do you hate the old? Well, are we the just, governor? I mean, I know, the I'm hell? a comedian. I yeah, what that was silent. Oh my god! I've noticed you haven't spoken up about the 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 whatever protests. I'm like, I didn't even know about it. Yeah. Like, what about the Taliban? Should we 
Where's your thing about that? You know, I like, know you want to scroll through their shit. Well, that's the new thing now. I, I have a bit now about this. It's hitting about how like you know everyone's like you know I saw a guy in a shirt that said fuck racism and I'm like problem solved. You did it. <laughs> exactly. Like that's what they think they're doing in their head. So I have, I have a whole thing where I'm gonna roll. In, uh, I'm gonna start rolling into parties in a shirt that just says against baby rape. Nah. Uh, and they're just like, uh, why are you wearing that? I'll be like, are you for baby rape? You know, you just spin it on them. <laughs> it really is so dumb. The shit that. That, Cause that's what Twitter is. It's like these people who are like trying to expose you. It's like well, you have fucking chinks in your armor too. Right, easy. <laughs> <laughs> She's, they're, they're gonna come after me for that one right yeah. there. They're like, but look no. what you said. Of course, they got the chinks, and uh, we all got the armor. But it's it's so true. It's like it's always the opposite. Like I feel like things are better now than they've ever been. Well, maybe not with the new abortion law. No, that ain't good. That ain't good. You know it's bad when you have to drive to Oklahoma to take <laughs> care of business. Let's go to the progressive part of this area. Tweet it. Oh, really? That's good. But uh, I'm sure that's been said. And you're talking to the abortion king. I got a punch card here. I'm, I'm <laughs> one more, and I get a freebie. Yeah. Yeah, I get a free sub. <laughs> but uh, no, I just I'm just saying we we're we're more progressive than we've ever been gay marriage is like a joke like oh you, if you're against that you're weird now whereas yeah. you know obama clinton hillary we're all like oh gay marriage is crazy you know it all changes obviously you know but we had uh, split water fountains blah 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 but i feel like people are doubling down more on being angry about stuff and yet they were they seem less angry before and i think it's always kind of the opposite you know when a supermodel is in the mirror like i'm so fat i'm so fat you're like you're not fat, but the fat lady's going, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. You're like, no, no, you're fat. She's not fat, but you think you're fat, and you think you're beautiful. And it's kind of the same with the racial stuff. It's like, we're fucking, they're killing us in the streets, and you're like, no, they used to do that. Now if they do that, they'll get arrested. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know what you're saying, man. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, going, I'm going extremes here. No, you're, but... you're making an interesting point, I think, because we Twitter is interesting because so much of news is broken on Twitter now. Yeah, like we will find out a celebrity died on Twitter. We yes. will find out, you know. And I found out. I found out the abortion thing on Twitter. So did I. I mean, so it's you find this stuff out. I woke up, looked at Twitter, I was like, oh shit, you yeah. know. So I get that outrage is currency, but also like you got you got to be outraged at stuff like that. Well, sure, sure, yeah. yeah that's a that's a new one. That's a big one. That's that one is anything moving back. I mean, that's the opposite of progress. That's going backward. Right. You know, right. agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And you think I think that it's a Texas dick swing and move like a lot of shit is going this way. Well, fuck you. We're going to go backwards. <laughs> you know, it's almost like a, we're going to compensate for your. Well, look at the governor, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, wheelchair. He should have been aboard. Right. <laughs> well, they <laughs> sorry, this is not a this is not a political podcast. If no. you haven't noticed. Yeah. He uh, got COVID, by the way. I know. And he had the booster, apparently. Ima oh, yeah? Imagine like telling people not to wear masks while you go get a booster like a fucking pussy. <laughs> like you're you're in your little safe space. Yeah. And, and there, and you're letting people die. Yeah, yeah. And booster just sounds so pussy. I need the booster. It sounds yeah. like a booster seat. Well, he's you know? a shitty character in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> I've booster. never seen it. You've never seen Jingle All the Way? No, that's no. the best bad Christmas movie ever. Is that Sinbad and Schwarzenegger? Wow, what a combo! And Phil Hartman. What? And Rita Wilson. Good cast. Oh, she's fun. It's that's Booster, the pink guy from. <laughs> the, oh, you Jesus. know who plays him? Curtis Armstrong from Revenge of the Nerds, Booger. Oh, I love that guy. I love that guy. He's good. He's great, but uh, Jewish. <laughs> and oh, dude, it's classic. The, 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 it's just a bad. It's a good bad movie. All right, all right. I love a Christmas movie. It's fun, man. Yeah, it's, it's not good, but dude, Phil Hartman. Yeah, yeah. No, is I'm that in. guy ever not great? I grew up on Sinbad. I love Sinbad. Sinbad's incredible. Yeah, Schwarzenegger is a is a great, just great presence on stage. He's so Hollywood. He's such a leading man. I'm in. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty bad movie, but I enjoy it. Now, what range we have? I say it every week. We went from killing, uh, killing fetuses babies. to to Sinbad. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's uh, it's weird, man. You know that uh, just as tough in Texas, man. I, I definitely. It is a weird time. That is tough. I feel like a lot of female comedians who moved to Texas are like, well, I'm heading back. <laughs> heading back to L.A. I'm not going to raise an open micers, baby. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah, that ooh, that seems like a nightmare. That is bad. Ooh, yeah. Damn. Yeah.
But hey, you know, right now the Taliban's like, hey, that was a good move there, Texas. Good on you. Now you're getting the idea. <laughs> We're still not that bad. I, yeah. I'm using the Taliban as our uh, barometer. <laughs> that's, that's a tough bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not as bad as the tally. No, 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 we're not. We're not. We're not. We still have uh, females driving and yeah. having opinions. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. They killed a comedian. Too many, some would say. <laughs> if you look at Twitter. That's true. Uh, no, uh, who killed a comedian? Oh, yeah, the Taliban killed a comedian. Tortured him, too. I saw that. What? Awful. Awful. Oh, Jesus Christ. From TikTok videos. Yeah, un unbelievable. Horrible. Was that he, shit hits close to home. Yeah, was he shitting on the country kind of stuff? Was I don't, I don't know what his jokes were. I don't know the type of comedy he was, but just seeing that, you're like, well, that's uh, that ain't good. That ain't good. I mean, half of people's acts in America is shitting on Biden, shitting on Trump. Yeah, that was that's like a big part of our our the American way. Is I don't know what the Afghan comedy power. scene is like. I cannot imagine it's booming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We have I trans don't... comics here, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, Comic beaten. Quite a bit, hey! Yeah, <laughs> oh, I thought that was a joke. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It was. Just checking. Uh, yeah, this is terrible. Damn. Woo-wee! Yeah, shit. I mean, I will say that, man. America has got its problems. That's horrible with Texas, but... Uh, we do have a lot to be grateful for. Sure. I mean, there is a reason the Afghanis are coming here. They're fleeing to here. Right. That says something. <laughs> and then they'll come and be like, never mind. <laughs> no, you know who's got the best abortion joke is, you remember that Louis C.K. bit where he's like, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, I think abortion is murdering a baby, but I think a woman should be allowed to murder her baby. <laughs> he, he goes, you're allowed to murder someone if they break into your house. That's great. That's a brilliant abortion joke. And it's so, he's just saying facts. Yeah. And it's comedy gold. Yeah. That's genius. Because you're like, oh, shit. Those are the best jokes where it's almost like, you ever see like Magic Johnson make a pass and he doesn't pass to the player, he like passes to the area and the uh, player goes to the ball. Those are like the best jokes where we have to like go to the thing. We're that's like, a there great we go. analogy. That's so true. I love, I love jokes like that, man. I do too. Yeah. There's, there's so many of those out there that they're just sitting there and yet they're the hardest to see like yeah. like norm mcdonald's joke about he's like people are scared of korea uh, korea he's like my dad died of a heart attack that's inside you he's like i'm scared of my heart you know like it kills you from the inside i'm not worried about korea i'm worried about this guy oh that's it's, it's like in you i mean it's such a great point that's fears you have when you get older and like also like man i had like I thought I was having an allergic reaction in a hotel room a couple weeks ago, and that feeling while your neck, it was just really bad allergies. I sound so fucking Jewish right now. Oh my God, I'm like a stereotype. But I almost died from allergies, guys. Uh. But I, no, but I was like closing up to the point where I was like, oh, this sucks. And uh, I was like, man, you just think about maybe dying in a hotel room, and you're like, that's rough. Oh, Especially God. if it's not a great hotel. Yeah. You're like, yeah. fucking died in the La Quinta. <laughs> <laughs> Stinks. What what gig was it? Where were you? I was in Portland. Ah, oh, Portland. Yeah, damn. Yeah, like Geraldo died in Jersey. I know. You know I think in a Hilton. But yeah, oh, I one know. of the one of the best ever. Yeah, it's a good one of the hotel. one of the. <laughs> no, no, yeah, Geraldo, one of the best. He really, really was one of the best, and uh, yeah, fuck. I know. I wonder where Mitch Hedberg died. Give that a goog, because he was a heroin addict. Apparently, it was shooting up the leg. He said when you lifted the leg up, it was just purple. Like Civil War gangrene yeah, type shit. Exactly. Awful. Was he also New Jersey? Damn. Oh, geez, I'm, I was, I'm there this weekend. Yeah. Fuck. You'll die too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just die on, on stage. stage. Yeah. <laughs> hotel room in Westmin, Westminster Hotel. John Panette died in a hotel room too. A lot really? of comedians die in hotel rooms. Man, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but uh, I did a gig. I'm not going to say where. And I had the crazy eccentric limo driver. He's like, oh, he's got his tie loose. He's got wacky hair. He's like, he's driving with a foot on the dash. You know, he's got his own car. It's got the fuzzy dice. It's all decked out. He's like, I've been picking up comics since 1979. I've had everybody, Steve Martin, Pryor, you name it. And he wow. said he had Panette. And he's like, Panette was wild. He's like, everybody talks about Kinnison and Dice and Pryor. Can it, I mean, Panette, he was like, make you get get off the airport, go right to a liquor store, two two uh, fifths of tequila. Then he had his own shit. He get hookers, all that. It was like, holy shit, Panette. He was like this cute, 
fat guy. My mom liked him. <laughs> Every mom loved Panette. He was huge in the Midwest. He was Damn. a great guy. I mean, killer comic. Such a nice guy. John Panette, if you haven't looked him up for the folks at home. And yeah, Beast, for sure. Beast! So, Damn. Yeah, I, I had no idea. He was like a booze bag and a party animal. It's hard to do what we do and not drink. Mm. It is hard to, like, come down after a set and not come to it like it's such an abrupt change of pace it really is because you do feel like incredible up there you feel so good yeah and then you come off and you're like oh yeah that's it i know just over just boom so like sex you're it's over you know it's over you right. come right you you're glad it's over you're, you're not glad the set's over that's true yeah unless it's horrible yeah yeah and then you go back and here's the here's the irony and or the catch 22 or whatever it is you go back to the green room, and you're in there. It's quiet. You maybe got the opener, maybe the host. The waitress comes in. You need anything? And it's completely somber and weird. You were just riffing, raffing, applause, hooting and hollering, getting heckled, handling, lights in your face to, thank you, green room, quiet. There's your, uh, you know, your, your fish sticks with the cigarette butt in it, the <laughs> napkin wrapped up. There's your beer. And you're like, all right. That's it. But you don't want anything else, really. Like, what do you, if, you, if an audience member comes in, you're like, ah, you know, like, it's the weird thing of like, it's weirdly quiet, but you also don't want to do stuff. Well, you get in those laughs and you kind of mistake that laughter as a, as a kind of love, at least yes. in that moment. Yes. And then you go to nothing. So it's almost like you've been consuming. It's like a sugar high and coming down. Yeah. Because you're getting like fake love in a way. Right. You know, and it's like they're they're enjoying you so much that that killing laugh. You're like, oh, I feel like they love me right now, and then you get off, and you're just like, oh, that's not real love. That's I just know. it's temporary. Yeah, but so then, then you kind of come to it's like a sugar crash. Yeah, it, that's a great way to put it. It's a sugar crash, but you could do the meet and greet uh, and get more love, but the meet and greet is hard. Oh my god, it's exhausting. And I hate to say it because there's people out there going, oh, he's coming to Tampa. I'm gonna say hello, and it'll be great. But you're like. They don't know the the mental fuck we're going through of like. It's the, another show. It's another show. This on stage is easier because you just kind of like find. I used to be so nervous on stage, and now it's kind of like yeah, I kind of know what I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. and like if it's something misses, and I'll work on it. It's not like the jokes don't have the same stakes that they used to have, you know. Why? What do you mean? I mean, I think I used to just react to bombing. Oh, I, I still yeah. hate bombing, but yeah, I course. I think now when a joke misses, I'm like, all right, I'll either fix it or I'll drop it. Now, before you, your first hour of jokes, you work so hard on. I mean, oh, yeah. you work for years on them, and yeah. then you get to a place where you're like, you're just not as attached to the jokes. Right. That's why I think the bombs when you're younger just hurt more because you're like, well, I know that I worked so long on that. Uh, now when you bomb now, you're like, all right, well, maybe that joke wasn't that good yet. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, you're right. I, I think we're more realistic. Yeah. We're less attached, less emotional. It's kind of like your first girlfriend. Yeah. She you, she dumps you and you're like, oh my God, I'm, gonna never, I'm gay now. I'll never go back. And then you start banging a couple ladies and then some gal dumps you. are like, all right, I'll meet somebody else. Yeah. It's kind of like that with comedy, but- Maybe we do need a little to go back to that that young young love. Maybe we need a little Stretch Armstrong, uh, you know, torture, <laughs> torture. Yeah, get exactly. spanked a little bit. Yeah. cry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, but you know, still love it. Still out there. Still grinding. We just want to create good shit. That's yeah. really what it all comes down to, you know. And and I think like I heard, I always hear Bill Burr. He's kind of like my go to to listen to sure and he always says sometimes i'll think i did a hot show at some theater they loved me and then my opener is going to an open mic he's like oh why would i do that and then he's like i'll go because i don't want to go and it'll shake me up like man these people are just blowing me at the theater these guys don't really care and i gotta i gotta wake them up and i gotta figure it out and it kicks that thing inside you any gig you're scared to do might be good for you and that goes for everything in life yeah, the harder thing to do is is sometimes you're like, oh, this is necessary. It's easier. It is easier to kill in a sold out crowd of oh, people yeah. that came to see you. But when you're doing those little shitty gigs, yep. and you're going up with comics that are hungry as hell and they're not there for you, yep, you're kind of on a level playing field. It's kind of yeah, good for you. That's one thing cool about the comedy store in L.A. And well, we're getting deep into comedy, but like 
he would have to follow Dalia or guys like that at the height of their whatever. And like, these are high energy, cool, young, sexy guys or gals and Eliza Schlesinger and Joey Diaz, like all these. So like, sure, you're Joe Blow, the cool guy, comic, big guy, big name legend. But it's still like, this is a young crowd. That was a young comic. They don't give a shit about my old ass and my kids and my wife. They want to hear fucking party jokes or fun jokes and you got to make it work. It yeah. It kind of levels it. It kind of, hey, we're, we're back to, I ain't, you know, John, John Johnson, the legend here. I'm following this guy who's famous and, and hot right now. John Johnson, dude, that guy used to, he used to do a lot of blow and strippers. <laughs> you ever hear stories about that guy? Yeah, I couldn't think of a cooler name. <laughs> no, dude, you know, I, I do get tired sometimes. Like, I feel burnt out, like just trying to like take care of myself now or, you know, we do the road every week. So you come back. I used to do so many club spots in the city. Like I, I realized those nights of me doing four New York spots a night are kind of over. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. do a couple in a night, but I'm I'm not going to Brooklyn to do a show that pays nothing that might suck. Yeah, no, I get that. Because I'm like I'm on the road, I'm too tired. I'm right. just like I'm all the flights, I mean fucking all the delays and then you do, you know, five or six hours of shows in a weekend. And then you're gonna come back for like a ten minute set. It's just not, it doesn't make sense. No, you got to take care sense. of yourself so you're good for those shows. That's true. You're right. No, you're right. And and what are you gonna get out of that show? I'll anyway? still do those shows sometimes, but like I don't prioritize them. Like no, I, I used to. No. I we were so conditioned to say yes to everything because we were abused for so long that right. we get to a, we get to a place where we say yes to shit when we're like, wait, did I just say yes to this shit? I know. I had that last night. What did you do? What was it? I did a show. You ever heard of Breezy Point? It's a neighborhood in Queens. Give this a, a look up there, sloppy. Breezy Jalopy. point. It's a it's a neighborhood. In, I feel like I'm giving it away, but it's on the map. It's a neighborhood in Queens. I kept calling it Long Island. I'm sure they hated me. I did a bar. It's on the beach. Look at that. Look at that. What, zoom out. What, what are you thinking doing this this far out? Well, I said yes to it six months ago. Look at that. This I did that last night. So How long what, did it take to get there? It only took about an hour and a half to get there by car. But we just cut straight through Brooklyn. Do they pay you well? It paid well, but it is a fucking like rootin' tootin' bar show at a beach house on the beach. Wow. Like uh, crazy, fun beach party vibes. And this place is crazy. It's like kind of walled off, and they it's it's like Irish, Italian firemen. Cool, cool people, but just like, we keep this name. It was like the fifties over there. There's like a little ice cream shop and, <laughs> and like not a scratch of trash. No, uh, fucking graffiti. I, I was like, I can't believe I'm in Queens, you know, cause Queens, you think of like Astoria and some, no, it felt like the beginning of like a forensic files, like yeah. a small beach town turned upside down. Yeah, exactly. Those exactly. are the best. But I didn't even know this place existed, and yeah. it was wild. Is it pretty? It looks pretty. It's beautiful, but it feels like you're in Destin, Florida, or Malibu, wow. or something. It's just, it's yeah, so it looks, clean. Look at that. That looks beautiful. Yeah, it's crazy. So uh, it was just a fun show, but it was rowdy, and I was scared out of my this, mind. You know what this looks like? That little uh, runway on the beach right there. It looks like the episode where Jerry. Uh, he promises he won't say hello yes, to that woman. Yes, exactly. And then he just starts running. <laughs> yeah, that, that might have been shot there. No, that was probably in L.A. But like, it's just beautiful town. Like, you feel like you're in Florida or something. It's so beachy. And, uh, and the crowd to, was good? crowd was great, but they were rowdy, and they would yell at you, and they would heckle, and they, would, they were in flip-flops and shorts, and they're all tan and holding a coconut drink, going like, Talk about the uh, Taliban or whatever. <laughs> Taliban. Everyone wants jokes with that. I opened by going, I just got back from Kabul, so this is a good gig. They're like, ah! <laughs> you know, and then I did it as a seller later, and they were like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it was fun because it was like, it, it felt like I was on the road for one night and came back. In the Those same are night. fun. Those are fun. Did you bring someone with you? Well, uh, they brought me. Like, the, the people drove me out there and they all opened and they knew everybody and like this guy looks like he went to sacred heart am i right they're like oh shit they knew all the local references for the the catholic high schools and everything so i had to follow like some local acts which was <laughs> tough but uh they were great big t the whole gang and uh you know the guy the guy's mom is there and everything oh, it was man. like real local shit uh but i was scared to go on i was like shit this is this is nerve-wracking here. It's like, good to feel nervous like it that. It is. It is. 
And then you come up with stuff on the fly because your brain is in this fight or flight. Like I'm about to get my ass kicked by these, you know, beachcombers. <laughs> but they were great. They were great. And they were nice. And they hate the city. They're like, fuck the city. We live in the city technically, but fuck going in there. It's it's dirty. It's dangerous. They've kind of built this their own little 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 paradise out there. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm pro city, but I, I it, New York's getting hard to defend. It is. It's so expensive still. There's it's just madness. I the the lack of taxi cabs in the city I right know. now is is New York is such a taxi cab city. It's it, it bums me out. I'm watching old movies and they just like get a cab like that, and you're like, that's the pace of New York. Yeah, not to be like, oh, coming in seven minutes. That's not uh, New York. That's a great point. Yeah, that's so true. It's a uh, it's a New York minute. Yeah. Now it's an Uber minute. Yeah. Which is about six minutes, if we're being honest. Dude, Uber. I try getting an Uber on the road. The Midwest. Oh. It's like coming in like 23 minutes, and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I schedule them. You schedule them? Yeah. That I, that was That's one of my smart. wrecks. Like, if I'm going to bed at 4 a.m. and I need to pick up at 9 a.m., I schedule that thing for, for that, I got to do that. I forgot about that. We drank on this podcast, so I forget a lot. Uh Tell me about it. It's Paloma. It's pretty good. Hitting the spot. Dude, I will, yeah, I, I was waiting for like 23 minutes or something for an Uber. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. I know. If I can make a woman come in less than the time an Uber, <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you guys got to step it up. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm getting, I've been with my gal so long, I'm getting really good at like the clit stuff. Uh, Are you? I, it's amazing how- Are you good in general? Or do you think you're just good on her? Her. Well. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's gonna. It's amazing how horrible I, I, I learned I was. It's like therapy where you had to go, okay, I'm bad. I need to fix this. I have an ego too, so it took me a minute when I yeah. you know, when I was so I was like, you're not doing it right. I'd be like, I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think I know where the clit is. I'm like on her shoulder. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that clit is a goddamn enigma. Yeah. Because it's so Easy. small. Yeah. <laughs> it's so small that like uh, it's so hard to feel, but then you can't feel too much because it's sensitive. So then you're yeah. she's, she's like, ah, that hurts. And you're like, God damn it. I know. Go easy on us, ladies, with the clit, the clit hate, because we're we're trying. Well, it's tough because sometimes they're like harder, harder than like I'm like ah, you're like I'm sorry, shit. Exactly. You got to deal with one giant clit with a hole in it, and stuff comes out of it when it's over, and it's very, it's very simple. The penis is much easier to work. Oh yeah. So bear with us, and then like they like the fingering when you hit the top part. So you're like, yeah. okay, you got to tell me that. How do I know that? You know, like we don't know what you're feeling, so you gotta you gotta be vocal. Yeah, I, a little guidance. Why not? Yeah, a little, I love like, guidance. I, 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 I know it's not hot to be like here, here, here. I understand like giving directions while you're doing it might take you out of the mood, but a little, just give a us little. a little. And you can say it hot, like softer, oh, oh, harder, harder, or whatever. You don't make it hot. I think they feel weird sometimes to just like say what they need. I agree. I, I I can't say what I need either on a on like a emotional level. Oh really? Oh, I, I tell you exactly what I need. I feel like <laughs> I'm like in the ass harder. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know how you do it, but uh, yeah, I, I, get I don't know it. how she gets the cucumber out. <laughs> <laughs> but tongs, tongs as a tell thing. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you can't have it both ways, ladies. If you're not gonna guide. We're not gonna get you there, probably. So you just willing us? Oh my god! To to get you there, it's not gonna happen. Jeez, what? It's like breezy point. I need a little help. Yeah, exactly. Give me a little help. Yes, yeah. Throw me a bone here. We might be drunk. Is brought to you by my bookie. Football's back, baby. Oh, my Giants, man. I can't wait. You're a Saints guy. Hell yeah. Who dat? You like easy money thanks to my bookie and their lock of the season. If either of the team scores in the NFL season opener, you win. If you don't know how, a game has ended 0-0 since World War II, so this is a sure bet. Head to mybookie.ag, select lock of the season, and if any team scores between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Bucks, you win. Woo! The best bet you can make is one you can't lose. My bookie is also hosting several exclusive contests, including their one hundred thousand dollars super contest. The best part? It only costs ten bucks to enter. There's big money on the line this season, so don't wait to get in the game. Join now, Mark. Tell them how to do it. Hell yeah! I just made a couple clams on that Jake Paul fight. Thank Did you, you, my bookie. Oh you yeah. You bet on him? Oh yeah. And uh, nobody believed in me. <laughs> Head to mybookie.ag today and use our promo code DRUNK 
and instantly double your first deposit. That's double your funds to double your winnings. Again, that's promo code DRUNK to receive double your first deposit and get started with my bookie today. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Sheath underwear, folks. Wearing it right now. I'm Look at that. I'm wearing it too. Look at that. Hey, there you go. We gave ourselves a Melvin. That's what they call it in the front. <laughs> Melvin. <laughs> I haven't said that word in 20 years. A fucking nerd name. It's a great... Never name your kid Melvin. No, bad name. Bad That's name. That's a rough one. That kid's getting If that kid with. doesn't get the shit kicked out of him, then he has just become such... He's surpassed expectation. Oh, yeah. Keeps your balls off your leg. There's two pouches, one for your dong, one for your sack. Keep the ammo separate from the gun. It's super supportive. They look good. They feel good. They're like stretchy and silky at the same time. The lady likes them. She's like, you look great in that. Look I at these. It. These are camo, like weird camo. Dude, I have those at home too. Yeah. I would never buy these, but when I put them on, I feel cool as hell. Your dick was in the Gulf War. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I got a Sandy Hook. or No, wait. Sandy Dick. <laughs> Shit. Sandy uh, Hook. What oh, the fuck, man. Mark? This is a sorry. plug, man. <laughs> sorry. This guy was in the Iraq War, by the way. This Rob. guy's a badass. He, oh, yeah. He's a veteran. Support a veteran. This guy's a, a, a great dude. He's a great dude. Yeah. He, he's a veteran. He loves comics, which is why he's on this podcast. Uh, go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order. And Sheath Underwear's 100% back, money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code DRUNK. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. The salt rim is fucking nice. It's very nice. The salt rim is always pleasant. So what's good about the bar Jew, I watched him in here tearing open salt packets. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I couldn't find any salt. I'm like, man, this guy's good. Damn, that's like some man versus wild shit in the bar. I love it. You know, I'll tell you, I love a good little chili salt rim too. You ever have a chili salt rim? Ooh, a little spicy I think rim. I have had that. It's Ooh. the the redder. It's like a reddish kind of spicy spice. butthole, buddy. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah, you ever you ever gone downtown and and felt a uh, a tingle? I I've never really found a woman who's into it. No, no, I'm saying, have you ever licked the thing where you're like that? Oh, that wasn't that? Yeah, that tasted a little I'm not off. sure. I don't think so. Ooh, you're a lucky man. Yeah, you're not into that, huh? Well, no, I'm just saying, like, I've licked a butt before, and I'm like, why did I, why is my tongue burning? <laughs> why is my tongue hurt? That's all I'm saying. And why do I have a fever of 103? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, why do I need to chug milk right now? Am I on hot ones? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just that's, saying. That's the next step in hot ones. Uh, instead of wings, Shaq is going to eat ass. Uh, <laughs> that's the next hot one. That's where it's going to go. I mean, yeah, what else? Have could, we have to keep upping it, you know? Yeah. Uh, Shaq is going to eat ass. That's hilarious. There's just, there's just a woman bending over and an interview <laughs> happening. And he's like, all right. <laughs> Jack's uh, like, oh fuck. He's like, yeah, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a bad. That's a spicy ass. That's right there. a Dominican ass. Yeah, they like describe it. It's got a hint of uh, chocolate and chili. Yeah, woo, hot ones. <laughs> oh, what a great idea for a show. I know that guy's killing it. It's like really the simplest idea. It's like, oh yeah, you want. Apparently he gives great interview questions too. I haven't seen he does. it, but, He's but like good. I hear it's great. But then I just look at him like that's perfect. It's simple is good. It really is, but it's simple and original, yeah. which is hard to do. Most simple things have been done, but he he found something. Wings, wings, and you get vulnerable. You get these big actors vulnerable, like DJ Khaled, who sucks and he's talentless, but he's like, oh shit, I'm, I'm hurting here, and you're like, well, I've never seen you. He won't like eat this. this. No. He won't do the spinoff show that we've created. No, no. Yeah. He's, he's a bummer. Yeah. Another one of you. You stink. <laughs> we'll get you out of here. Let's get another celebrity. But yeah, yeah. Just like seeing those kind of people, men and women, these giant celebrity millionaires, like, oh, fuck, I'm hurting here. It's fun. With the questions, you get the best of both. Yeah, he, uh, it's a great idea because it's, it, that he must regret it the way we kind of feel it every once in a while in this show where he's like fuck the, eating wings at a certain point yeah I bet the other day true. we were like fuck I do not feel like eating spicy wings today I never thought about that that's a great point because we are you know we're feeling it some days oh, there's I mean, some days when we night. drink on the road and I'm just like oh fuck alright we got a drink for this podcast I know I know 
it's tough but every also now we then, are destroying our brains that's true which so. is like the only thing we need you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome yeah he's destroying maybe a taste bud or you know having a burning sensation maybe some shitting burning butt for yeah. sure yeah, i mean i get shitting. i mean i have a burning butt from this stuff Do you? oh my god i make here's my i want it all that's my problem like mm. I, you know what i did yesterday we so we pre-recorded we're doing two because i'm out of town mark's out of town but like we so we did the episode yesterday we had a bunch of those drinks I had a ton of coffee that day to just Ooh. make it through the day. I ate spicy Thai for dinner. Ooh. Wash it down with some candy. Ooh. What kind of candy? Gummy bears. Ah, uh, you're a child. And and I had a like a peanut butter cup too. Oh, yeah. oh man. We were watching uh. watching TV and <laughs> Holy shit. And then I had the so nerve to be we sitting on the toilet TV. this morning. Like, why? <laughs> As if I didn't know. Don't forget that donut in the middle of Oh, my of God. The we game. had donuts, yeah. too. That Oh, God. Man, oh, Bacon man. Bacon donut. Oh, I deserve it. Yeah, yeah. I coming. deserve to be in pain. Every now and then, throw in a nectarine or something. Just keep them in the house. Throw them on top of the fridge, a just, banana. Just, just to surprise my body. Yeah, just like, thank God. Your body gets a glass of water and a banana. It's like, thank you. Dying it's funny. Here. You see porn of a guy getting like whipped and tortured. You're like, who would put their body through this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I do. What I do is worse, probably. Yeah, yeah you're doing it on the inside. Yeah. That's funny. I'm a fucking idiot. But candy and spicy Thai is amazing. At least there's some vegetables in there. Probably. I love Thai food. Is like oh. if we're going like takeout in New York, I don't think it, I don't think you could top Thai. Man. Number one. That's probably my go-to. Same here. I come back from the road. I go, hey lady, we're going out to dinner. What do you want? She goes, how about Thai? I say, yeah, I can get Thai every time. Love well, Thai. What's your Thai order? I go. Well, see, I go to this one place called Galanga. Shout out! But they got this. They got a thing called Little Garden. Is that a is that a normal thing? Little garden. That's what they call on the menu. But it's just basically <laughs> like happy ending. Is that normal? <laughs> what is a little garden? It's galanga. Uh, it's just vegetables. You pick your you get your chicken, your beef, or your pork. You pick or shrimp, and I get the chicken. And uh, I, what what's in it there? Uh oh, you might be you might have gone down a wormhole here, sister. But. Uh, Either way. It's was just, it noodles or like, what is it's it? It's rice. So they give you the side of rice. They always put in a cone shape, which I appreciate. Love a cone. Love a cone. It goes a long way. And yeah. you just dump it right on the veggies and the sauce. And I mix it in and it's delightful. What's in that? Give me the description there. I can't read that. It's too small. Oh. Wok stirred, broccoli, cauliflower, carrot, string bean, bok choy, baby corn, and a light soya sauce with jasmine rice. See, I don't Damn. even know what any of that is. Bok choy is cabbage. You know what that is. Okay, but I don't know what soya is, but... It's soy sauce, I think. It's probably a oh, typo. Is that a... No, they don't have typos in Thai. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it is. It is soya sauce. All right. Fermented soybeans. Right. Soya beans. All right. So it's basically like a rice with some veggies and a meat. What, what do you do? I go noodles, man. I get those drunken noodles, man. Oh, I love drunken That's noodles. That's my go-to. That's a great order. I just feel guilty about that because that's a lot of noodle. You're you're inha you're inhaling a a big amount of pasta. Am I? Yeah, but I mean, hey, I'm with you. I do it too. It's that's my favorite. I I do t uh, drunken noodles, and pad uh, thai is hack. It's still good though. It's good. It's hack for a reason. It's hack Pad for a CU's reason. a nice little order. That's a great one. That's my number two. Pad CU. I go drunken noodles. Pad CU, and then pad thai for noodles. Yeah, yeah. I'll fuck with some curry. Oh yeah. I always saw Anthony Bourdain at these Asian weird truck stops with like eight guys and they're at like a picnic table. And he always had this amazing looking Thai food or Chinese food, whatever the fuck it was. And he had a beer with him. And I was like, man, that looks good. That he just made funny. food look so good. Yeah, dude. That whole intro, he's in the sunglasses the whole time. Like, this is a cool dude. I know. And he never faked it. He never like, he never did all, got all hosty. Yeah. Here we are, folks. Oh, it's good to be here in Thailand. He was just like, "I'm hungover. We're in Thailand. We're gonna we're gonna get a haircut and a massage, and then go eat." And you're like, ah, "This guy's living." The best. Apparently not. <laughs> but uh, like, it didn't end well. I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's just tough when a guy like that does it. Because he's the coolest. He had the yep. best life. But then everyone sees the best life, and you're like, "That was a tough life." You're on the mm. road all the time. You don't get to see your kid. For sure. You have to turn it on. Con like, you're on. That's a lot of shoot. Like, you watch how many episodes he does per season. You're like, that's a lot of travel and shooting. Oh, really? And, I mean, think about it. Those are hour-long episodes, dude. 
Wow, that's true. It's a, those are long shoot days. You got to be on because think about how much they probably don't even use. Yeah. Why doesn't that girlfriend of his get more more flack? Which I one? I mean, I feel like she's a big reason he pulled the trigger. Well, we don't know that. That's well, not that's not fair to put on her. I mean, but she doesn't seem like a great person either. <laughs> I mean, she had a fourteen year old on the side. She was cheating. Fourteen? Yeah. He wasn't fourteen. Look at him. He was a younger guy. Was he really fourteen? He was. Yeah, I think she was grooming. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird that grooming can be either great or horrible. I know, isn't that fun? Isn't that weird? You're either like, you're either like, oh, just make sure my sideburns yeah. are intact, or you're fucking a fourteen year old. I know. I know. Why? It's why so, are those the only two ways? That's it. Yeah. It's either like, oh, hell, his mustache is right. is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like I send my dog in to get groomed, <laughs> and then it's or it's you getting a fifteen year old ready to get plowed. It ain't good. It ain't good. I had a thought the other day about how jump roping is either done by the toughest guy on the planet or the most innocent kid. It's like a 10-year-old or a fucking murderer. Interesting, yeah. yeah. It's not much in between. It's not like a 40-year-old guy jump roping, really. That's true, yeah. It's either someone who's going to kill a kid or it's that kid. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he got it from the kid he killed. Aha! Uh -huh. That's not bad. All right. Can I use that? Use it. All right. What? Uh, yeah. Is that is that legit, Matt? Is, is was she was he fourteen? Was she grooming a guy? See, I know she she had a thing about against Weinstein. She was one of those. Yes, she called him out publicly. Which, but you but know, I also her. but also apparently you know she they were in an open relationship, but she was like you know, but then she was, you know, being public with other guys, which is it's not how you do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not very classy. I mean, if you if you look, if you're adults and you consent to an open relationship, that's your sure. choice. I for me, I think that's like an odd choice personally. Yeah. But also uh that's what and but you know, but then she was not very discreet, I guess. No, 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 no. I don't trust her. Yeah, I don't I, either. I don't know why, but I don't. Yeah. Either way, either here nor there Do we groom this innocent boy since six years old and said, wow is this but is this confirmed because we do see right right oh boy this is getting ugly this is getting Damn. too silly. let's get back to the taliban this oh. is getting a little too uh <laughs> hairy here um yeah. harry styles he'd be cute. hairy if it was groomed <laughs> yes here here uh you got a bit or a peeve i got a peeve Please. I don't know if we've read this on a Patreon or whatever, but I was thinking about this. We've done so many, but by the way, sign up for our Patreon, patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. Email us questions, peeves, uh, fucking jokes, drinks, anything at we might be drunk pod at gmail.com. You got that you, right. If you got packages for us, send them to Gotham Studios on 38th Street. Oh, yeah. We got we open them on the, on the Patreons. They've been a ton of fun. We video them, too. Got a good little thing going here. Um, yeah, you could have your shit on the wall in the studio. Don't forget. Yeah, we're dying to replace this one right yeah, here. So whatever some, the hell. Can that you is. see the Mennonites? I don't know if they're that's yeah, on camera. Yeah, we got, we got a good Dangerfield one over there. Why don't we just switch these two? That's uh, better, right? Yeah, we got a lot of Rodney uh, in here. <laughs> I'll tell you. I tell you, this is this is here to stay. Yeah, Pryor, the the Tony with the horse. The big three is here to stay for sure. We could dump that one though too. Do right. you know the horse's name again? Pio Mai. Pio Mai. There Classic. It is. All right, here's a peeve. People who say no pressure when there should be no pressure. Oh. You get a text like, hey, no pressure, but uh, will you uh, watch my house for three weeks? And you're like, why, why, would, I, why would there be pressure in that? Uh -huh. It's a big ask. Sometimes people say that when it's like a big ask. I, I would argue there is pressure. What do you mean? Like no pressure. Can you watch my house? You're like, Jesus Christ. That's what the point I'm making is like, oh. you're fucking there. This is like a, a high pressure ask, I'm saying. Oh, oh, so there is pressure. Well, yeah, there shouldn't be pressure because it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be asking this even. Right. It's, it's too That's big what I meant. I misspoke. I yeah, see, yeah. I see. Okay. Now I got you. Yeah, I, I completely People do agree. that shit all the time. Hey, no pressure. It's like, hey, fuck you. We, we barely know each other. Yeah. People, people will do that a lot. They do that a lot because they're trying to soften it. But it's obvious, like, this is a huge... Yeah, open it by saying, I know this is a huge ask, and I'm very sorry. That's how you'd preface that. Yes. You don't say, hey, no pressure, but uh, can I borrow $25,000? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's true. That's a big move. The no pressure has to be picked wisely. You can't just use a no pressure. Hey, no pressure, but uh, my wife is dilating. Could you deliver it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm with you. 
That, that no pressure is just. I don't know. It no. That, it bugs me a little and bit. And it's so obvious that it's such an obvious play. At yeah. least hide it a little. Hey, no pressure, but can you uh, do a twelve day shoot for free for me and uh, <laughs> and then watch my dog the entire time? Right. Right. Exactly. No, I'm with you on that one. I hate the no pressure where there is pressure. <laughs> Because there is, you're, you're lying to me out of the gate. No pressure. It's a lie. It's all pressure. What uh, What's a peeve of yours? Mm. I had this last night. Wrote it down immediately because I hate this shit. You ever have the guy who's telling you something you don't care about already? He's like, oh, my nephew, he uh, he got in a little league, and then uh, they wouldn't let him in. You know, they wouldn't they wouldn't let the let him in because they said he wasn't good enough. And I'm like, oh yeah, I don't know you. I don't know your nephew. Like, I don't know you. You're already onto your nephew. Like. First of all, how did we get here? And then he's like, let me show you. Let me show you his swing. And I'm like, I don't want to see the kid swing. I don't give a shit. He's like, he's got a great swing. This is, a, this is on Breezy Point. And I'm like, all right, all right. And You're not even a sports guy. Like, for me, I'd be like, oh, look, I'm, 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 I like baseball. I mean, I, I'm, I humored him. I was like, sure, let's see the swing. Yeah, what, I can't imagine you, you don't want confrontation. No. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm up, I'm up against the wall with this guy. He's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And... That's another thing when people are just like coming at you and you're like, I can't get further away from you. I'm literally pressed against the wall and you you love that. But so he he couldn't find it on his phone. Now he's doing the thing where he's like, hold on, hold on, up, oh, shit. I can't hold it's it's in here somewhere. And I'm like, you're struggling to find a thing to show me that I don't care about anyway. Like, even if you get it, I don't want to see it. The thing we don't want to do is now an inconvenience. Yes, exactly. The thing Great I way don't to put do. it. Great way to put it. So now he's like, hold on, hold on. And, and like other people are talking to me and I'm like, oh yeah. And I'm trying to like get out of it and go, go to them. But he's like, hold on, hold on. I'm going to find it. And now he's saying it like, I'm going to find it. Like we got this. Don't worry. I'm not going to let you down. Like, no, no, you're letting me down by showing me. That's the letting me down. I'm already dying here, but you think letting me down is not pulling it up. He's like, I got it. Don't worry. And I'm like, I don't want to see it anyway. That should be a socially acceptable thing to say. You're killing me. <laughs> yes, yes. You're killing me right I'm now. Dying. Uh, I'm we dying. have a finite uh, amount of time right. on Earth, and you are, you are killing it. Yes. Slowly. I And I'm like secretly jealous because I'm like, what world are you living in where you think strangers want to see this nephew swing a bat? Like, You better not go back to Breezy Point with this story. I know. I feel bad. This guy's never heard of an iPhone or a pod. He's pulling this up on a rotary. Like, this guy is so, <laughs> he was old school. He had, like, he had bike, remember those bike shorts? Not bicycle shorts, but shorts, at the brand bike. They had, like, a weird waist. This guy was out to lunch. He was all over the road. But I'm just saying. Plugging your special. Yeah, he's pulling this thing up, but I'm like, I didn't want to see it anyway. I'm glad the phone can't pull it up. And you're still trying to show me. And he finally found it. And it was a kid going. And I'm like, all right. How the kid old was sucks. he? He's probably 12, 13. I mean, Jesus Christ. It was Little League or something. I'm like, I don't care anyway. And you're struggling with it. And you're making Watch me. Watch this kid be the next A-Rod. This <laughs> <laughs> is the fucking the breezy point, the, the breezy point kid. <laughs> I saw him win. I, I knew he had it. I could tell. I could see it. He had the talent. And the kid had a. Yeah, I'm it, like, Mark, you got to get the breezy point sensation on We Might Be Drunk. It's a huge get. Well, if he makes it big, we'll have him on and I'll shit on his uncle. But uh, yeah, just the the the, the four minutes of yeah. like, I'm going to get it. Don't worry. Oh, uh, man. A you get I'm a like, lot of that in the road, too, where like you just kind of want to like sit in the green room. Like, thank God we're at a point where we can kind of just like sit in the green room and just be like, let me just fucking shut off for a second. Yeah, it's necessary. You start to get the uh, like Seinfeld does TM. And at first, you're like, look at this fucking hippie doing the TM. Jeez, he sits, um, you know, that whole thing. But you're like, I get it now. I get the shutting down and just having a minute for you and like kind of recentering. But I mean, I still can't do it. Do you meditate? No. I can't do it either. It's very hard. It's like, it'll be like things like notice the smells. And I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, drunken noodles takeout from earlier. <laughs> I, I feel so zen. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not good at it. I understand that it's uh, is good for yeah. you and that it helps. But I get I, it. But it's ver my ADD is so bad. It's very hard. I, I would, I've, I've done it before and it has helped. Oh, really? I think it's just good to be aware of your breathing. We, we are so overworked. Yeah. Like, we don't realize it because we like our jobs, but like, man, we don't take days off. Like, no. it's crazy. And if I do take a day off, it's like a travel day or something. Right, right. You know, yeah, it's like, it, it's true. So it's, um, that's a good point. It is good to be aware of, of your, 
mind and your body, I, I think, but I'm not good at it. I'm not either. But I do see people like that, and I'm like, well, that's... He probably knows. I mean, he's done it. For, he, I, I think Seinfeld has got a wisdom that we probably don't have. Right, Doing right. this that long. I remember being on the road with disease. He would do it. Phil Hanley would do it, too. They would really? do. They would meditate, yeah. Every day, twice a day. And they would feel like I would be pounding coffee at like 5 p.m., and they would be like energized by their own body. Right. And there's something pretty damn cool about that. That's super cool. I asked Seinfeld, I was like, what is with the TM? What, what's the, the upside of that? And he <laughs> You goes, asked Seinfeld, what's the deal with TM? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> You're sitting in the corner. You're doing this. <laughs> What? God knows what's going on. What's the deal with a Dalai Lama? <laughs> He's not a llama or a Dolly. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but he's he had the best answer. And I was like, oh, you've gotten asked this before. But he goes, you ever get like a great night's sleep and you just feel ready for the day? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the best, but it's rare. And he goes, I have that every time after I meditate. I was like, geez, now I guess I got to do it. We should do it. We should do it. Let's do it. Because the fact you have ADD and it's hard for you, imagine if you beat that. Imagine if you got past that and went to the other side. I feel like that would be a big deal. That'd be a breakthrough. Yeah. You know, like beat the ADD. Yeah, yeah, sure. I want to have other thoughts, but I'm pushing back and I'm going to calm you down. You're not calming me down. I have ADD, but I think this is common with people with ADD where I am obsessive with certain things. If there's things that I really am into, I become obsessive. Like weird things like movie facts, sure, basketball statistics, weird things like that. Comedy, I can talk yeah. all day. You know, all it's right. that one of those weird things where like, but I do feel, it happens a lot of time I'll be accused of having ADD and I'm like, it's like midnight and I'm tired. <laughs> and someone's like, you weren't listening to my to my story about my nephew's swing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, maybe that's not on me. Right, right. Well, yeah, some people are just boring as hell. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not your fault. But no, you're right. You're right. Can't blame everything on the ADD. Some people yeah. suck. Some but people I do, I do have it for sure. It is hard for me to focus even like with things occasionally that I, I do care about. Yeah. What about these people who go, ADD is not real. You know, you know, there's all those guys like anxiety is not a thing. Oh, that's got to suck that's, it up. That's completely crazy. That's crazy. That's someone who doesn't have anxiety. Like I don't have my, I get anxiety, but I've seen people with worse anxiety than me. And I'm like, oh, it's so real. Clearly really? like, yeah, dude. I mean, don't you ever get those nights where you're like just panicking? Yes. There are people that feel like that all the time. That's that's real anxiety. There are people that are medicated for anxiety. Anxiety is fucking real. It's real. I had an anxiety attack. I don't want to say I've had them a bunch, but I've had one I had that was like, oh, this is an anxiety attack. I'm so bad at math. I failed out of college. I got into community college in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm in math class, algebra. I cannot do math to save my life. If my mom was my mom's life was dependent on me doing an algebra problem, I couldn't do it. Damn. And I was sitting at a table with like eight other kids. That'd be a really weird uh, serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> the fraction killer. <laughs> but I'm sitting I'm there. trying to educate people. Yeah. <laughs> this whole thing. I'm trying to help. Never used it once, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Louisiana public school system. But I'm sitting there at community college. It's hot out, whatever. And I'm sweating over this test. I'm just staring at this test. It's like a final exam. If I pass this, I get through the fucking school. I'm praying to God. And I remember I was looking down at it and the test got blurry and I was dripping sweat and it was like hitting the pages. And I remember being like, oh my God, I'm having an anxiety attack. I thought I was going to die. And I fell backwards in the seat. Wow. And they let me leave. I was like, oh, I'm freaking out. They let me leave. And I think I got out of it. And you walked away like Kaiser Soze. Yeah. <laughs> you just got away with it. <laughs> uh, I fixed my limp and I got it together. Yeah. Um, but no, that was, uh, that was one of the worst anxiety moments of my life. And uh, just, Went into, I changed my majors. I went you, to film. I mean, is that a faint, would you call it? I don't or, think I fainted because I never went out like yeah. mentally, but I fell backwards in the chair because I just lost it. I, like, Damn, my body your went body out. body tightened up. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we were like, oh my God, it was like out of a movie. Like, are you okay? The, the lady's fanning me. It's some Southern lady, you know? And uh, this boy's like, got the vapors. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I said the N word. It got weird. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. You ever had a real, ang a proper anxiety attack? Not like that. No, I haven't. We have a friend who's got bad anxiety, and he got hives before a show once. Wow. And he was kind of like, 
and he was turning red and having splotches. And I remember like, oh, that's, well, that's... this is right after he stole Mary's shoes. <laughs> it was a real attack. Yeah. Though. I was like, oh, that's the real deal right there. Damn. Yeah. I'll tell you after. I know you were there. Is. I was there. Hell yeah. I we think were I, all there. I think I know what it is. Yeah, you probably know what it is. <laughs> I think I know it. But I remember being like, wow, this guy is big red blops on his face. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing you don't think about is like people, like there's a lot of rejection and pressure in so many careers that like it's it's crazy. It's it, a weird choice. Like this ain't France. We fucking, we got, we got a long work week here in America. Oh, yeah. We we got high press. Yeah, high blood press too. Oh yeah. We got weird food. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 weird because you go to like you ever been to Italy or Paris or any of that? Like they are just chilled out compared to us. Yeah, cigarettes, wine, yeah. and all the women are still thin somehow. Yeah. What the hell is that shit? But portions. They, I think it's portions. I think it's portions, and it's fresh. We but got also a lot of cigarettes. If you're smoking cigarettes, that's probably killing your appetite too. True. True. Also, I think we are like the kings of snacking. Oh, we can graze because uh, they like they're known for like croissants, but it's like you know, yeah, that's Richard true. Jenny used to have a great bit about how what we do. Like we, they had the croissants, we made the croissant wedge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's nothing more American. You're like, ah, oh, that's a great observation. Another underrated guy, Richard Jenny. Check him out. Classic, classic killer joke comic. Great observations. Great performer too. Great performer. Rare great writer performer that's true yeah another guy who killed himself brutal um from brooklyn but he was great uh yeah so true they're thinner than us we're fat as shit and my whole family's fat and uh yet they they eat pasta or or you know cheesecake and croissants and pizza and all this shit what is that i think it's preservatives too i think we're eating a lot of like garbage yeah funyuns and shit yeah. They're not eating Funyuns over there. Yeah. Funyuns. Yeah. <laughs> they're not eating yeah. pizza rolls. Yeah. I feel like also the portion control thing, though, is like we eat big portions. I eat, oh, a, lot. I eat a lot. I really like, I eat a lot, man. And then and it's they just walk. Normal. Like my mom cooked this dinner the other night, and I just like, my brother and I were like, we go back for seconds. Oh, like same. We, we eat a lot. Yeah, keep it coming, I say. We do dessert. I mean, we do. The French, I think it's just like they eat rich foods, but it's smaller portions. Yeah. And they don't have a buffet mindset. The like, buffet. We but literally that, have eat till you can, can't eat anymore. It's like it's like a game. It's a game. You ever go to a buffet? It's fucking great. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I grew up on buffets. There are people I've talked to with like, what's well, lower quality food? I'm like, yeah, but there's everything. Every You want an egg roll? You want salmon? You want a chicken paprikash? It's all there. General Tso's. You get a fucking taco. You got soft serve. It's incredible. Oh, my God. The jello. My God. The jello. Cookies. Cookies as far as the eye can see it's what's great. your go-to at a buffet i go i've, I've done but I, I got a phd in buffets i've yeah, done every too. buffet oh me too the key is at a buffet is you you, you want to think with your stomach you go oh my god look at that lasagna and you want to just pile it on but the key is get a little morsel of lasagna because you just want to taste it yeah you taste the lasagna and you Not, keep you don't moving. overdo on the carbs exactly you want that sliced turkey in there get the turkey get the gravy Eat half the egg roll, a lot of waste going on. And then I pile it on top. I don't care what it is, cheesecake, tiramisu, lasagna, pancakes. I pile the whole thing on top with shrimp. Well, I, get a, shrimp. I get a boiled shrimp and then a side of uh, I fuck the with some noodles, sauce. too. I, I will do the Chinese area as well. I will oh, do, yeah. If they got sushi at the buffet, I'll fucking roll the dice. Hell yeah. I'll do always, I, I went to a buffet once with... Oh, it was a shitty buffet with oysters Rockefeller, and I was like, I'm a struggling young comic. Let's dance. <laughs> Give me the shellfish, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll do crab legs. Oh, hell yeah. I put the bib on. I get the oh. lobster. I'm cracking that shit. Crab legs fucking rule. Oh, I love crab legs. It's work, but when you get that meat out of there, you feel like a, a prospector. You're like, I did it. I found the meat, the gold. Butter, lemon, seafood. It's like, I don't think there's anything better. No, no. I think that might be my favorite thing to eat is like really good seafood i'm with you i'm with you as you can't a, top it man there's a new orleanian seafood like you'd go to the grocery store even in that window or that that like case the glass case with just the row of seafood oh my god it was like it was glowing like the the suitcase in pulp fiction 
I loved it. Uh, what what's your go to for seafood? I mean, I'm a crawfish guy, which I know I'm biased, but like boiled crawfish, the fat guy like rolls that out on the, the table red, yeah. with the red, just and like your steam. sleeves, man. Yeah. yeah, it's the best. Oh, you just pop open, you have a beer next to you, your hands are filthy, your mouth is burning. Woo! Suck the head, baby. I've never you? been a crawfish guy. I, I, I mean, shrimp, crab. Shrimp is great. Shit, crab if there's great. lobster in the house, I'm fucking going crazy. I haven't had it for so many years. Yeah. Um, lobster are a little overrated, I think. But a lobster roll is fucking money, dude. A lobster roll is great. Good call. Lobster roll with fries, that's a fucking, that's a good meal. Hot or cold? Oh, I like it cold. I like it hot. I like a hot bun, obviously, but mm. a, but a cold cold lobster. I love I love that. It's like borscht. You can get hot or cold. I could, I could go. You know what? I could go hot though. I love borscht hot or cold too. I'm I'm fucking. I guess if it's the summer, I want it cold. But if it's like indoors, I want it hot. Yeah, borscht is so good because gazpacho. I think is. Nobody wants that shit. I like it. Oh, come on. Who's Good the... vet in the summer, nice veggie soup, cold. I'm you down. You order that at a restaurant? I'll go borscht ahead of it, but I'll fucking uh, order it. All right. All right. I'll go borscht ahead of it, too. Not everyone crushes a gazpacho, but when you have a good gazpacho, that's fucking nice. That is nice. Yeah, I no, like it. No, borscht is my favorite soup. That's my number one. Oh, and the, the comedy seller borscht is top notch. It's great. Veselka, man. Veselka, too. Support Veselka, man. I think they've been struggling this pandemic. If you're in New York City, uh, East 9th Street, or I believe it's 9th Street. 9th and 2nd Avenue? 2nd Avenue. I mean... 24 hours you can't yeah. do much better they, they got everything but man the pierogies the borscht the everything it's just one of the best yeah i got a hot 4.5 i give it a 4.8 i give it oops sorry oh sorry we've had some late nights in there we've had some meetings in there we'll meet at basilica we'll talk it out we'll figure it out i mean that's a great what is it uh polish look at that shit it's ukrainian i believe oh look at that that's beautiful, beautiful. oh that fucking stuffed cabbage with Ooh. gravy i will fucking eat that ass why isn't Let's stuffed cabbage it. talked about more that is one of the best dishes on the planet stuffed cabbage stuffed peppers that meat the pierogi i mean that's great food fat grandmas from poland oh. or the ukraine are it's probably my favorite like this is probably my favorite like comfort food yeah you go borscht you look at that vodka oh. my mom makes the best vodkas by oh, the way really? oh my god how nice is that i'd right? like to try one pierogies we should do that with hanukkah maybe this Ooh, this december we do that i like it we got all this man this is i think this is what we do yeah we we gotta we got we gotta do this one day i'm down baby look at that i love patreon the, the, or something the jiggly arms on the lady with the apron pulling that latke out of the oven with some applesauce and sour cream sour Sour cream on that dude a little fucking Ooh. sweet onions i love the uh the mushroom barley there i'm fucking yes. i'm getting hard dude this I is know. crazy that's some sour cream coming out of you that's the, <laughs> that's the thing about the midwest you go to these german towns these polish towns these polacks can pull out some cabbage it's unreal and and we don't really have a lot of it in the south we didn't have any of that shit really I, but. I, i'm so over mac and cheese it's to me it's the most oh, it's fine it's fine it's fun if you're doing something crazy with like it's too like soft when you do the crunch in there i'm down mm. when there's like the breadcrumbs but like i don't know if there's a, a more overrated food than mac and cheese yeah it's just cheese and and shitty pasta it's easy i don't know i i get it at a barbecue i'll do a scoop it's look i like it, it but it's not my it's not even people are like oh Mac, I'm a mac and cheese. Remember when when there was like it was like the early it was like probably the early two thousands mid two thousands. Yep. When people's entire personality was like I like bacon. <laughs> That's yes. how I feel about mac and cheese. People, I'm like y you, yeah, it, it's cheese and pasta. Of course you like, but there were people like for a period where they're like I like bacon, and you're like wow, you wow. like the crispiest, saltiest. Like I who know. doesn't like bacon, man? Yeah. Even vegans look at that shit and they're like I wish I could yes. indulge. The Taliban like likes bacon we get it <laughs> uh, the, what's the the uh they had bacon vodka for a hot minute that came out bacon had a run mac and cheese had a huge run there was all those places in new york like what was it called sh sh sneeze or cheese yeah 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 i know the place you're talking about cheese. it had some weird name more so no uh smack smack that was it which is a little offensive to the drug addicts, by the way. But uh, They walked in very upset. They were <laughs> yeah. like, you have misrepresented yourself. What the hell? This is worse than that place called Crackle. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Oh, is it still open? I think it is. I think... Uh, it was pretty Lewis's good. They go had buff there. you know they had buffalo mac and cheese. Uh, that was fucking good. That is pretty good. See, look, like, you're not going to get a thin person in smack. Even in the ads, they keep it real. I appreciate that. But... 
it's just mac and cheese. I don't know. Expand your palate. Get a stuffed cabbage for once in your life. Broaden it that up. That does look pretty good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, if I'm going to be like bad and indulge, I want like French fries. Like, you know? Yeah. The worst thing for you, by the way. They're so good, though. I know a, a bunch of nutritionists, and they all say French fries. Don't eat them. I'm worse like, than chips? Worse than chips. Damn. It's that thick potato. potato. Apparently, potato is not great for you. It's a starch. And... I'll tell that to the Irish. They were yeah. dying for them. <laughs> I mean, I love potato. French fries are like the best bad food, though. For I you. know. And I like to dip them. And they're just right there. It's and just... steak and potato is like the ultimate oh, yeah. American hearty meal. Steak potato with like a scotch or a Jack and Coke. or Oh, uh... the bar Jew works at Bobby Vans. I was saying on the 100 episode, we should go down there and, and have a steak. Should we do that? Yeah, we'll get a couple of peaty scotches and have a steak and fuck with each other. Bobby Van, is that good? Uh, I think it's pretty uh, solid, you know, solid steakhouse. Let's look up the ratings. 1969 on Park Avenue. You can't go wrong. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Or we can go to that place, Old Homestead or something. I think he works on the one on 50th. Uh -huh. West 50th. That's right by here. Oh, beautiful. Old Homestead, he works there? No, no, I'm just saying. I've, That's the oldest. That, I've never been there. Oh, I went there once. It's a good it's time. It's good? Yeah, because whenever we, if you go there, you're not buying. It's some rich guy who's like, we're going to Old Homestead, you know? So it's uh, it's a fun time. Remember that one we went to with Schumer and a bunch of other guys? Keens. Bill Hanley. Keens! Keens is the best. That is nice. Talk about old New York. If we're talking like, yeah, they did, it's, you know, it's funny. They did a, a Billions episode there where it was like, they ordered the mudden. Ah, that was, the that's mutton. the thing to order is at Keen's. Everyone's like, you got to get the mutton. I've never had. What is mutton? All I know is the Seinfeld episode. Thanks for mutton. It's red meat. I don't know. It's it's from a cow, is it not? I think it's some something to a mutton. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What makes a mutton a mutton? It's is it goat? Is it? Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mutton oh, refers to the flesh of the mature ram, ram. or ew, at least one year oh, old sheep. It's a sheep. Interesting. I was totally wrong. I'm sorry. 20 months old. Wow. It's like an Epstein. They get in early. They get out. The meat of the sheep, six to 10 days, 10 weeks old, is usually sold as baby lamb and spring lamb. Damn. He, sheep. he wow. was on the lamb. Yeah, he was. Damn. That is fucking weird. So it's, oh, mutton. I it bet looks it's good. It does look good. Damn. We can, get some, we can get some keens, dude. Oh, man. We probably got to get a reservation. Do we? I assume. They do outdoor dining, too, though. I bet there's what? room. Yeah, we could figure it out. Damn. Keens is fucking legendary, dude. What are we at? I, uh, I feel like we've gone three days here. I, it feels, feels like we've been blowing the light. Are we okay? Oh, we got to yeah. do a bit. Let's do a bit. All right. Anna I got Rick. nothing. I got Because I, my shit's either working or it's just a I, loose idea. So let me try a loose idea on you. Give me a Lucy. I was talking to someone... And they told me uh, they don't like movies. Like one of those people. It's like, who are you? Who fucking doesn't like? I was, you know, I said to them, I said, you know who does like movies? Uh, Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Kim Jong-un <laughs> likes movies. And they were like, what does that mean? I'm like, that he's a better hang than you. Uh, I would yeah. rather hang out with a North Korean dictator. Right. And then you think about it and you're like, well, aside from <laughs> murdering people and treating his country terribly and killing family members, he's probably fun. Oh, yeah, maybe. He's got a flat top. He's young. He's, he's in the basketball. He loves movies. Yeah, he knows Rodman. <laughs> that is true. But I was thinking, but like, it is funny. People are like, people People with the dumbest opinions are like proud of them. Yes. Like that's you're, the like, I, I'm like, I, I don't like movies. And it's like, you're proud to not like. <laughs> I would like, keep that quiet. It's like, it's like yeah, well, you're proud that you don't like a thing that's like, by the way, we've done as well as anybody. Americans. Oh yeah, we got so many good. I mean, it's just a weird thing to like. That's the hill you're dying on. No, I'm with you, and they think it makes it more interesting when, in fact, it actually makes you less fun or less desirable. You don't like movies? Get out of it. You know that guy? Like, I don't like ice cream. I don't get it. Fuck you. That's you what, dude. That's it's person back in the day was like. I don't even own a television. You're like, oh, you, okay, don't talk to me. Right, right. It, it's like literally when someone's like, the Rolling Stones suck, and you're ah. like. Yeah, they're the problem. Not right. you're, not that you were a fucking idiot. Exactly. Contrarian. I don't know what the joke is here. It's more I'm just annoyed. Yeah, that is interesting. There might not be a bit here. This might be something I just... Maybe it's a peeve, but I'm with you. It might you. be a peeve. You know, oh, I fucking stink. No, well, no, I, I feel you. It's ya. a peeve more than the bit. 
That, I think the angle is though that they think they're interesting when in fact they're actually revealing that they suck. Yeah. You know, because like the KKK also very proud. You know, yeah. and they're like, hey, no, we this is the right thing to do. We're burning crosses. Just because you're proud doesn't mean you're right. There you go. Yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> the Proud Boys. Yeah. Just because you're proud doesn't mean you're right. Well, it's... don't tell that to the gays. <laughs> <laughs> that whole parade would go to hell. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that that's an interesting angle. Cause they think it'll make me, oh, this will make me stand out. But sometimes standing out, it, it's kind of like when people say, I'm open minded. And you're like, yeah, but so is he about fucking kids. Right. He's more open minded than you are. I mean, that. Yeah, thinking, subject. well, it's really that you think you're interesting for not liking. Yes. For not liking a thing that that is just like, how do you not like? Yeah, it's popular for You're a writing reason. off a whole <laughs> fucking art. Yeah, right. I don't like movies. And it's okay to not like it, but yeah, you should be weird. But don't act like you're fucking like... You're, you're like, better than me. Yeah, you're like, I don't like movies. Yeah. Yeah, you should ex- look inward a little bit. Like, why don't I like movies? I guess I can't sit there for two hours. Or Have you seen good movies? Yeah, I, there's nothing here. Fuck it, go, go to yours. I'll, I'll I'll think of something better. I, I'm, I'm playing with it. I, no, I there's, like, there's, I like there's where nothing. Your head's this at. is trash. It's literally, my jokes are either that right now or they're working. I don't have a lot of in between that yeah. need like tweaking. Well, new ideas are so few and far between. Like good new ideas. That movie one's hitting from a couple weeks ago. What's that? The one about uh, how uh, fuck. I, I basically. Uh, my girlfriend will say, um, you know, you're trying to have sex with me and we're, you know, we're watching a movie and, and mm. I didn't want to do it. And she's like, you don't have sex to watch a movie. And I was like, I'll fuck you during the movie that you picked. <laughs> That's a great joke. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuck you. Like, I don't want to fuck you during Godfather 2. I'll fuck the shit out of you during, uh, Little Women. Uh, <laughs> you know, so the turn is like, I have more confidence in my ability to pick <laughs> a movie than I do in my sexual prowess. Because oh, I can right. say shit about the movie I can't say about what I'm doing in bed Like I can't fuck someone and she's not into it And be like you just didn't get it <laughs> It was ahead of it's time that's what I did. So that's hidden yeah what it do you got, got Great reviews Well that's that's one we talked out here What what, what do you got I like that uh, well, but this... that, I'll come back with something better next week That was loose Same same uh, Trash. I don't think I have a big one either But uh, me and my friend were talking about how we were younger And this is also loose Talking about how we were younger that uh you used to hear about ninjas a lot more. Like, remember, it was all like everything was ninja this, ninja that. I'm like, well, I guess because they're doing better. And ninja, that's the whole ninja, bit. please. Yeah, but uh, like ninjas, they're they're not around yeah. much. You don't hear about them much, and you're like, yeah, because they're killing it. They're that <laughs> quiet, you know. And I think that's a funny yeah. twist. But I'm like, what's the what's the point here? I'm making. Yeah, and they're I guess not, there's nothing. That's who. That's how you know they're doing well when you never hear from them. Yes, exactly. It's kind of like a dead be dead. Right, right. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you know they're killing it if they're just not around. Right, or a politician. Like, the more you hear about a politician, the, that means there was a scandal or they fucked up or there's something happened. But, like, what's I another? See, what's I'm, another job you don't want to hear shit from? CIA, FBI. They're kind of F- quiet. FBI is good. Yeah. You want them to be uh, hush hush. You keep hearing buzzing about the the FBI. Maybe they're not so an intern. If you hear a lot about an intern, oh, that means she sucked yeah. off the president. Uh, See, it could have been a throwaway. That's a thing. What's another job that you, if you hear about? Alan Havy had that great joke. He's like, my wife, my ex wife was in the CIA. It was great. She'd come home and be like, how was your day, honey? She's like, I can't talk about. It. He's like, perfect. <laughs> it's a great joke. That's a great joke. But. uh... Yeah, the the, the uh, ninja thing, it might have just been a nothing. All right, how about, let me throw this one at you. That, yeah, that feels like a, a throwaway line. I'll get off, maybe, like, I'll I'll tack that on to a bit, you know? Sure, sure. Doesn't feel like a full premise. Okay, sorry, my, my tile is going sh- nuts. Why is your tile going nuts? I don't know. I think I'm sitting on it wrong. But, Jesus, tile, shut up. All right. All right, it's done. The, uh... I'm doing this whole bit about how the slut shaming, like you shouldn't slut shame, but I think women hate sluts. So there's all this like anti slut shaming stuff, but like ladies, you hate them. Like women will be able to be like, I hate that bitch. Fuck that slut. So you're like, so it is bad. <laughs> so you got to tell us. 
Because yeah. this is on you guys. You know, women are like, how come if a man sleeps a lot of girls, he's a player, but if a girl sleeps a lot of guys, she's a slut. And I'm like, well, I think because you believe that, ladies. Yeah. And that gets a big laugh. And then I'm like, you guys hate sluts. Men, yeah. we love sluts. And that kills. But I think I need something, some more there. Yeah, no, like the enough. only time a man hates a slut is if he's dating one. Right, right. That's the only time a man hates a slut is if he catches his wife fucking the neighbor and is like, you slut? Yes. No wife is like having his ass eaten by his wife and is like, you slut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then they'll be like, well, men call women sluts too. And I'm like, yeah, we do it because it works. It still gets a rise out of you. But if you call me a slut, I'm like, let's party. <laughs> you know? yeah, like, yeah. We don't care. You guys care internally. Yeah. It's in you, ladies. You act like it's this man thing. Like these slut men are, these toxic men are yelling at sluts. Like, yeah, but you have the problem with it. It uh, bothers you. Yeah. Jim Jeffries, different bit, but Jim Jeffries have a bit of it. I thought it was so funny about it. He's like, to be, a, to be a stud, you know, you have to be rich. You have to be good looking. He's like, to be a slut, you just have to be there. Like, there are there are dwarf sluts. There, there are no dwarf studs. I mean, he goes, maybe in their own community, but none that have crossed over. That was right. a, a Jim Jeffries bit I thought was so good. Well, yeah, Bill Burr had the bit. He's like, why is a girl a slut and a guy a, a stud? And it's like, because it's. Being a stud is hard. It takes work. You yeah. gotta like win a woman over. Being a slut is easy. That's why it's a knock. But my whole point is women act like it's this thing that guys say, like these sluts, but it's like, yeah, but you hate them too. Yeah. Don't act like it's just us. Well, they're fucking shit up for them. Aha. Because they well, they all have like a product, so to speak. Now and one group somewhere. is giving it away for easy. So if you're a fucking five star restaurant, you don't like Wendy's. Aha. That's great. You That's know, the angle, there's baby. There's the angle. All right, we got it. It's kind of like like BLM. Black people are like, hey, Black Lives Matter. But it would be like if black people also hated black people. No, no, you guys are fighting for black people, and you still like black people. They're like- If there was and, Samuel L. Jackson and Django as part of that group, you're like, you can't be part of us. Right, right, exactly. It doesn't make sense. So there you go, ladies. That's, that's a good bit now. That's hot. That's we hot. got uh, good stuff coming out. Uh, also, shit, man, please watch my doc, which is now, oh, I shit. would assume, out. Uh, YouTube.com slash Sam Morrell, M-O-R-R-I-L, or just YouTube, uh, full capacity Sam Morrell on YouTube. Going to be a banger. Love what we have here. I'm fighting with Salicuse like crazy lately, so it better be good. Better be worth uh, <laughs> fucking up our friendship. No, this is, this is how <laughs> art is created. Passion. <laughs> Worlds colliding. Please watch that. See me in uh, Millersville. Oh, no, Atlanta this weekend, then Millersville. Oh, no, I believe it's Millersville this weekend. This is in two weeks, right? Yeah. So Millersville, Pennsylvania, uh, 9-15. Then we got, um, fuck, we got Philly Helium. Ooh, one of my faves. 16th through the 19th. Moon Tower in Austin for a few nights. That'll be great. A lot of great comics there. Uh, Yep. I'll be in St. Louis, Indianapolis, Springfield, Missouri, Chicago, uh, fucking uh, Comedy Works in Denver, Phoenix, samrell.com slash shows. I'll see you on the road. I can't wait. Hell yeah. I'll be on the road as well. Nashville, uh, West Palm Beach, Atlanta, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, all kinds of fun gigs. Check marknormancomedy.com. Uh, yeah, watch our specials. Give us a like, give us a comment. We'll get our albums. They're all out there, folks. Netflix is out. Give that a fun hello. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we get that whiskey at some point. Who knows we'll what's going out. on? <laughs> We're working on it. Lawyers. Yeah, it's all the legal mumbo jumbo. Who the hell knows? But, uh, yeah, keep, keep watching, keep drinking, get on the Patreon. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously. Leave a nice review. Subscribe to that Patreon, as Mark said, patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. Woo! Thanks, guys. We love you. Comedy. <laughs>